Section 25 of The Aesop for Children. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jill Ingle. The Aesop for Children by Aesop. The Old Lion and the Fox. An old lion whose teeth and claws were so worn that it was not so easy for him to get food as in his younger days, pretended that he was sick. He took care to let all his neighbors know about it, and then lay down in his cave to wait for visitors. And when they came to offer him their sympathy, he ate them up one by one. The fox came, too, but he was very cautious about it. Standing at a safe distance from the cave, he inquired politely after the lion's health. The lion replied that he was very ill indeed, and asked the fox to step in for a moment. But Master Fox very wisely stayed outside, thanking the lion very kindly for the invitation. "'I should be glad to do as you ask,' he added, "'but I have noticed that there are many footprints leading into your cave, and none coming out. Pray tell me, how do your visitors find their way out again?' Take warning from the misfortunes of others. The Man and the Lion A lion and a man chanced to travel in company through the forest. They soon began to quarrel, for each of them boasted that he and his kind were far superior to the other both in strength and mind. Now they reached a clearing in the forest, and there stood a statue. It was the representation of Hercules in the act of tearing the jaws of the Nemean lion. See, said the man, that's how strong we are. The king of beasts is like wax in our hands. Ho! Oh, laughed the lion. A man made that statue. It would have been quite a different scene had a lion made it. It all depends on the point of view, and who tells the story. The Ass and the Lapdog there was once an ass whose master also owned a lap-dog. This dog was a favorite, and received many a pat and kind word from his master, as well as choice bits from his plate. Every day the dog would run to meet the master, frisking playfully about and leaping up to lick his hands and face. All this the ass saw with much discontent. Though he was well fed, he had much work to do. Besides, the master hardly ever took any notice of him. Now. The jealous ass got it into his silly head that all he had to do to win his master's favor was to act like the dog. So one day he left his stable and clattered eagerly into the house. Finding his master seated at the dinner table, he kicked up his heels and with a loud bray pranced giddily around the table, upsetting it as he did so. Then he planted his four feet on the master's knees and rolled out his tongue to lick the master's face as he had seen the dog do. But his weight upset the chair, and ass and man rolled over together in the pile of broken dishes from the table. The master was much alarmed at the strange behavior of the ass, and calling for help soon attracted the attention of the servants. When they saw the danger the master was in from the clumsy beast, they set upon the ass and drove him with kicks and blows back to the stable. There they left him to mourn the foolishness that had brought him nothing but a sound beating. Behavior that is regarded as agreeable in one is very rude and impertinent in another. Do not try to gain favor by acting in a way that is contrary to your own nature and character. The Milkmaid and Her Pail a milkmaid had been out to milk the cows, and was returning from the field with the shining milk-pail, balanced nicely on her head. As she walked along, her pretty head was busy with plans for the days to come. "'This good rich milk,' she mused, "'will give me plenty of cream to churn. The butter I make I will take to the market, and with the money I get for it I will buy a lot of eggs for hatching. How nice it will be when they are all hatched and the yard is full of fine young chicks!' Then, when May Day comes, I will sell them, and with the money I'll buy a lovely new dress to wear to the fair. All the young men will look at me. They will come and try to make love to me, but I shall very quickly send them about their business. As she thought of how she would settle that matter, she tossed her head scornfully, and down fell the pail of milk to the ground. 
and all the milk flowed out, and with it vanished butter, and eggs, and chicks, and new dress, and all the milkmaid's pride. Do not count your chickens before they are hatched. End of section 25